it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using this Fairy Friend set from Lawn Fawn and I'll also be using the Echo Park Sunny Days Ahead 6x6 pattern paper pack. I'm going to be coloring my images with Copic markers today and I'm starting out with my fairy. So for her skin tone I'm using E50, E51, and E53. I'm just starting with that E53 and laying in some shadows and then I'm going to blend that out with the E51 and then just finish off with that E50 for the lower part of her face and the ends of her hands and feet. And I'm also going to grab the R20 and just go ahead and give her a little bit of a rosy cheek. The next color combo that I'm going to be using is the Y13, Y15, and Y17. The Y15 that I have is a chow marker that's what has a different kind of cap. Um, and I'm just going to start with that Y13 and begin flicking on some hair for her. I don't want to color it solid. I want to have like the texture of hair. So I'm just flicking that color on and I am working lightest to darkest. So now I've gotten up to the Y17 and I'm going back down to the Y15 and I'll finish up with the Y13. And I'm not going to blend those in, just going to leave them as they are. I'm also going to take that Y17 and add a little bit to the top of my daisy and give the lantern a little glow. And I'll blend that out with the Y15 and then finish with the Y13. And then I also decided to go ahead and add a little bit of glow to the inside of the window in the fairy house. Even though this is going to be a daytime scene, I thought maybe they've got a fire going because they're cooking dinner or something. I just wanted to add a little bit of color in there. The next group I'm going to use is some blue green. So I'm going to use the BG10, BG11, BG13, and BG15. I'm not going to use all four on everything that I color blue green. I might leave off the darkest or the lightest, just depending, but it'll still kind of keep it in that color family. So for these kind of bluebells, I am using all four colors. So I started out with the BG15 and blend it out with the BG13. And I'm going now to the BG11 and bringing that color down almost to the tips, just leaving a little bit of space left for that BG10. For the daisy, I'm starting out with BG13 and I'm only adding that right where the petals overlap each other, just so there's a little bit more shadow there. Then I'm going to blend that out with the BG11 just really concentrating on the edge of that BG13 and pulling that color out. And then I'm going to grab the BG10 and just finish up the rest of the flower petals with that. I'm going to use just the BG11 and the BG10 to color in the fairy's wings because I want them to have that really pale, almost translucent quality. And then I got a little heavy handed on that daisy. I wanted it to look more white than blue. So I'm just grabbing my colorless blender and going over the ends of those and trying to blend back the color a little bit, kind of um, return it to a little bit of a white tip. I'm also going to take the BG11 and just add a little blue tint to the lantern glass and the window. And I'll color in the fairy's wand with BG15. Next I'll be using RV21, RV23, and RV25. And beginning with that RV25, I'm going to color in a shadow right there on her neck and down the back of her dress. And then I will take the RV23 and blend that forward. And I'm just going to leave that bottom edge at the front for the RV21 as my highlight. I'm going to color the tulip with those same three shades. So I'm just adding a little bit of that RV25 right where I want my shadows to be, where the petals overlap, and then towards the base of the plant where it would be in shadow. And then blending up with the RV23 and finishing with the RV21. And I also decided that I wanted my fairy house to be this pretty hot pink color. So I added some shadow with the RV25 right underneath the roof and also along the edges of the doors where it would have a little bit of shadow there. 
and then I'm blending that out with the RV25 once again and just leaving that little bit of highlight on the edges for the RV21. For my greenery, I decided to use G20, G21, G24, and G28. Once again, I'm coloring darkest to lightest, so I'm adding some shadowed area towards the base of the plant where it's going to be tucked into the grass, and also um, right under the flower head where it would cast a shadow. And then I'm going to take that G24 and blend out that G28 a bit. That is a really um, dark color, the G28. So I want to be really careful to blend that out well so that there's not too much of a stark line there. So just bringing that color down and leaving some space for the G21. And I'm just going to use those three shades on my three flower stems. So there's two different ways that you can color the roof of the fairy house. You can make it look like a blossom that is turned upside down, or you can color it to look like leaves. And I chose to do leaves today since I already made the house pink. I didn't want another vibrant color really close to it. So I'm going to color the um, roof as if it's all made of leaves. So I'm using that G28 again as my darkest and blending out with the G24. I will also blend out with the G21, but I'm not going to take it all the way down to the edge. I want to leave space for that G20. It really adds a nice fresh pop of like a yellow green on the end. It makes it look really healthy. Um, so I just wanted to save that spot for the G20. So just a few details left to go. I'm using the Y13 to color in the top of the fairy wand and part of my door and then the Y11 to finish off that door and the fairy wand. At this point I didn't want to introduce any more new colors so I went back to my E53 and the E51 to color in the little stone path and the stone uh, hearth of the fairy house door. And I'll just die cut these out with the matching dies. I've also die cut myself a focal panel using the Lawn Fawn's Stitch Journaling Card die, and I also cut two pieces of grass using the Grassy Border die. I've got a lighter green and a darker green. I'm going to pop the lighter green in my Misty so that I can stamp out my sentiment using some jalapeno ink. This is also the ink that I used to stamp out all the little greenery that I used on my uh, card here, the little... Uh, shoots and furls and things. So I'm stamping out Have a Magical Day twice on the bottom of that strip of grass and while I have my Misty out I'm going to go ahead and stamp my inside of the card. I've got a sentiment from Tiny Tag Sayings and then a fairy and some little uh, glimmer marks that I'm stamping with the Lawn Fawn Merman ink and I am going to stamp that twice just to have a nice crisp impression. So now I can start to put together my focal panel. I'm going to take some Tombow Mono Multi Glue and just add a little bit down at the very bottom of this lighter green grassy border. And I'm gonna glue that straight down to the darker green grassy border. And then I'm going to add a bit of foam tape down at the bottom of that one so that I can pop that up and just add a bit of dimension. So I'll just peel off the backer sheet and line that up really straight and press that down into place. And then I can start to add all of my little elements here. I want to add the fairy house down in front, so I'm going to take some more Tombow Mono Multi Glue for that. I'm also going to add a teensy bit of foam tape to the very top of the roof so that it can support the area that is um, flat against the card that is not adhered to the popped up panel. I'm going to take this little green furl here and add some glue to the back of that and then I can tuck that down into the grass on the left side of the fairy house. And that is where my little lantern is going to hang. I'm going to tuck the little bluebells into the darker green grass way up at the top so I can create some dimension, uh, a little bit of a depth of scenery on my card. And then I will take the tulip 
and tuck that in on the right side into the lighter green grass so that'll look like it's um, pressed forward and I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of foam tape to support the top of the blossom on that as well. The daisy stem was a little bit too tall for what I wanted so I just tore off the bottom of that and tucked that down in the lighter green grass so that it could have a little bit of variation of height there. Before I get any further, I just want to test the spacing for my little fairy. So I've added some foam tape to the back of her, but I haven't pressed her down very tightly so that I can peel her off once I've decided where I can add my last little bits of uh, greenery here. So I'm going to take this little curly Q thing and add that to the area behind the fairy house. It looks like it's growing out of the back there. And then I can press her down securely into place. I'm also going to add the little fairy wand into her hand and I just used a tiny little sliver of foam tape right behind the little star on the top. And then I'm going to take this last little furl and just tuck that into the grass between the flowers. The only thing I didn't use was the stone pathway but there just wasn't room for it. So my card base is a piece of MFT's snow cone cardstock scored and folded to a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch card and this is in the landscape orientation. I've got a couple of pieces of pattern paper that I've trimmed down here. Um, I just cut this down to four and a quarter by five and a half so basically a whole card front and then I just trimmed off a bit of the bottom and I flipped that over so that I could have two different patterns there out of the same exact piece. And then I trimmed down a third piece, and this is a little pink polka dot pattern. And I've cut that down with the Lawn Fawn Stitched Scallop Border Die. And I'm just going to adhere that lightly with some Tombow Mono. I don't want to press that down all the way until I'm sure of exactly where I want it. I've added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel, so I'll just peel off those release papers and then I'll line that up on my card front and I don't really like where that scallop border is so I'm going to try to pull that down and adjust that. That's the great thing about using the Tombow Mono is it makes it really easy to be able to do that. And then I can go ahead and pop that up and I'm going to do it a little high of center on my card. And if you'll notice I did add three little butterflies to my focal panel. These are from the Wild For You stamp set. I just felt like it needed a little bit more movement, so I colored those up in the coordinating shades that we'd already used. And I did that while my battery was charging. It had run a little low, so that's why I didn't capture it on camera. To finish things off, I'm going to grab my favorite crystal stickles and just add a bit of glitter here and there. So I'm going to add it to the glow of the lantern and the window. I'm also going to add it to the fairy wings and the fairy wand. I'll add some to the centers of my butterflies. I don't like to coat things completely in the glitter. I like it to be an accent. So those are just going in the centers there. And then I'm going to add a little touch to the edges of each of my flowers. Again, just as kind of a highlight. I don't want to overpower the card with it, but I did feel like it needed a little bit more on the left to balance out the right side. So I added a little line to the edge of each of the leaves on the roof. And then I added it to the fairy house as well, but I decided I didn't like that, so I just wiped it off with my finger. So that is going to complete our card for today. There's a look at all that pretty glitter with the shimmer there and the inside of the card as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That lets me know that you're interested in more videos like this one. Here's an extra couple videos you may also find interesting and you can always click on my photo to subscribe to my channel if you have not done that already. You can also click the notification bell next to the subscribe button if you want to be sure not to ever miss any of my videos. Have an amazing day! Bye bye!